the fundamental job of any CFD solver, however simple uh, or sophisticated it may be, is to solve to a certain level of accuracy in some approximation scheme the Navier-Stokes equations which describe flow, uh, fluid mechanics. So, uh, as they stand, the Navier-Stokes equations aren't amenable to direct attack by a computer, and as such, they need to be reduced to a form uh, suitable for numerical simulation. And in order to do this, you need to turn the differential equations which you have into algebraic equations. And a key step in so doing is to define a grid, so that you want to replace continuous space-time, if you will, with a set of points, a discrete set of points. So with that in mind, it's clear that this first phase amounts to some form of approximation, the introduction of a grid. Nevertheless, there is a lot of flexibility to the way in which you do this, and you can use this to your advantage. So certain applications uh, will be better simulated by particular types of grid, and so forth. So with the uh, advent of Release 9, we're offering a new type of solver, but it's perhaps worth going into some of the details of how the old solver works first. So the old solver is based on what is perhaps the simplest type of mesh, which is a structured mesh or structured grid. And the idea of this is that your grid lines run right through your entire domain, so from top to bottom, left to right and so forth. And it has a number of advantages using a structured grid and also uh, some commensurate disadvantages. The advantages of the formulation are that it's conceptually simple and consequently easy to implement. And there's also a certain degree of efficiency with, uh, which it provides. So, for example, a common operation that the solver needs to perform is given uh, a value at one cell, it may wish to inquire as to the value in the next cell so that it can perform some operations such as constructing the difference. So it needs to know how to go from one cell in your grid to the next. And for a structured grid, this is an easy operation to perform. It essentially just amounts to adding the correct number depending which direction uh, you're going in. And so this operation is easy uh, and it's also efficient. So, Although it's a simple structure, the structured grid has these benefits of ease and efficiency and uh, implementation simplicity. Um, there's an additional, more subtle benefit that it has. So when you set up your discretized equations in the first place, you have some choice as to where you store your variables, so where you store your velocity variables and your temperature variables and so forth. And an obvious choice to make is with each cell just to store each variable in the centre. And it turns out that this is actually uh, numerically somewhat deficient and that it's a better idea to actually separate things out so that your velocity variables live on the faces of your cells rather than at the centre. And this is called the staggered approach. And a sort of an implicit uh, advantage of the structured grid, which is what our old solver uses, is that it's easy to implement this staggering of the variables. So that summarises hopefully uh, some of the advantages which a structured approach provides and the structured solver, our old solver which we uh, currently ship, has been considerably optimised, so it runs very effectively and also scales well uh, in terms of parallel computation. But there are some obvious disadvantages which such a, uh, such a construction has. So you may suppose that you've got some region of your solution domain which requires very fine gridding, so you may wish to resolve some complex geometry or certain aspects of the flow. Uh, and so if you want to put a fine grid in some region around here, because in structured grids, the grid lines run from top to bottom right way through the domain, you're going to find that this grid bleeds throughout your entire solution area. So although you get the fine grid where you want it, you also find that you get additional grid where it's perhaps not necessary. Or to put it another way, given this structured grid that you have, you could in principle remove certain cells, in other words, coarsen the structure, hopefully without appreciable loss of accuracy. So in order to do that, one can adopt an unstructured approach, which is essentially a more general type of gridding. So to go the, to, the, to the, full, the, the full extreme of this, the most general thing you can imagine is constructing your grid using arbitrary polyhedra. And this would allow you to grid in any way that you like. Uh, and an advantage of this, for example, is if you do have complex, maybe even curved geometry, you can get grids in principle at any rate which very nicely fit the geometrical structures that you have. However, there are various disadvantages to this approach. There's never a free lunch in this. So the grids themselves can be complicated to generate. And moreover, the staggering procedure, which was shown to be useful numerically in the structured case, can be much trickier 
to implement. So the new solver that is being shipped with Release 9 tries to combine some aspects of the structured grid, I should say technically a structured Cartesian grid, with aspects of an unstructured mesh. So it doesn't go to the full uh, generality of the unstructured framework, but it hopefully captures enough of it to be able to give robust solutions and to maintain some of the advantages that the, stag that the uh, staggered structured approach has. So in particular, the new grid that we're generating on which the solver is built uh, utilises directly, in fact, the original structured Cartesian grid that we have. And if, if, this, if you like, can be considered as the first step for using this grid. So once you have this first uh, structured grid, what you then proceed to do is create a hierarchy of successively coarser and coarser grids. So you begin with your grid which has got all this refinement that you want to capture various aspects of geometry and physical effects, and then you imagine a successive hierarchy of ever coarser grids. And the actual computational grid that one ends up employing is going to end up taking cells from some mixture of this grid. So you can imagine if you've got something interesting going on in this region here, then you choose cells from your finest grid. Maybe in this region over here, there's not much going on, and so you go down your hierarchy to one of the coarser grids. And so you assemble in this manner an unstructured Cartesian grid from this assembly of structured grids. So the advantage of this approach is that it allows essentially arbitrary uh, degree of unstructured refinement within the restrictions of it being Cartesian. But it maintains some of the uh, simplicity of implementation. In particular, at each stage in this hierarchy, each of these individual grids is behaving just like a standard structured grid, and so it retains the ease of uh, implementation at each level. Viewed as a whole, there is an additional level of complexity, and one wishes that one will use this hierarchy of grids to, re uh, to generate a truly uh, a true unstructured mesh, which is represented by the appropriate graph. The final advantage uh, of this approach, which is worth mentioning, is because at each level it's retaining this structured Cartesian approach, it means that the staggering, which is rather tricky to implement in other unstructured approaches, can be done fairly directly. And so in this sense, the new solver hopefully successfully combines, on the one hand, the advantages of an unstructured approach, which allows you this essentially arbitrary refinement in your solution domain, to capture physical effects where you're interested in them and to lose grid where it should be unimportant with aspects at least of the implementational simplicity of a structured approach together with the uh, possibility of staggering the storage of your variables to provide essentially a strong pressure velocity coupling which is numerically uh, a more stable thing to do.